Lesson 25. I do not know what anything is for. Purpose is meaning. Today's idea explains why nothing you see means anything. You do not know what it is for. Therefore, it is meaningless to you. Everything is for your own best interests. That is what it is for. That is its purpose. That is what it means. It is in recognizing this that your goals become unified. It is in recognizing this that what you see is given meaning. You perceive the world and everything in it as meaningful in terms of ego goals. These goals have nothing to do with your own best interests because the ego is not you. This false identification makes you incapable of understanding what anything is for. As a result, you are bound to misuse it. When you believe this, you will try to withdraw the goals you have assigned to the world instead of attempting to reinforce them. Another way of describing the goals you now perceive is to say that they are all concerned with personal interests. Since you have no personal interests, your goals are really concerned with nothing. In cherishing them, therefore, you have no goals at all. And thus, you do not know what anything is for. Before you can make any sense out of the exercises for today, one more thought is necessary. At the most superficial levels, you do recognize purpose. Yet purpose cannot be understood at these levels. For example, you do understand that a telephone is for the purpose of talking to someone who is not physically in your immediate vicinity. What you do not understand is what you want to reach him for. And it is this that makes your contact with him meaningful or not. It is crucial to your learning to be willing to give up the goals you have established for everything. The recognition that they are meaningless rather than good or bad is the only way to accomplish this. The idea for today is a step in this direction. The idea is, I do not know what anything is for. Six practice periods, each of two minutes duration, are required. Each practice period should begin with a slow repetition of the idea for today. I do not know what anything is for. Followed by looking about you and letting your glance rest on whatever happens to catch your eye near or far, important or unimportant, human or non-human. With your eyes resting on each subject, you so select, say, for example, I do not know what this chair is for. I do not know what this pencil is for. I do not know what this hand is for. Say this quite slowly without shifting your eyes from the subject until you have completed the statement about it. Then move on to the next subject and apply today's idea as before. So we can practice lesson 25. I do not know what anything is for. What a helpful lesson today. I do not know what anything is for. It's super, super, super helpful because 
we need to accept the fact that we don't know. <laughs> and it is a very in a personal deceived mind is very strong the thinking that you know thinking you know what is good for you what is right what is best what something is for it's it's a very very stubborn um, mindset so this gentle practice will help us to surrender to be humble with everything because it, it actually often is like we, we we can allow that in some areas in some things in life in our minds but with everything there, there are favorite areas and parts where we don't let spirit in where we think we know best I think we know what anything is for, that we make conclusions. So this practice will help to undo that stern mindset of thinking we know what things are for. Thinking we know what, what is good or bad for a personal self. If we surrender, we could be led much easier into a happy state. It's very good. It's related to, I do not know my own best interest. I do not know what anything is for. It's not the same. Practice. And it's a nice state of mind to rest in, to be in. Because there are no conclusions there, it's just an openness. Do we have some sharings today? something on your heart yeah I'd like to to express something mm. um, yeah it's quite difficult um, just during the meditation just where it up, uh, I had a lot of sadness but a lot of anger, felt well, fire, like a fire, mm. um, and I think a lot of this has <clears throat> emerged since around Tigna Arn's death. It seems to be in some way related, but not a specific. Not anyway. I was just. Um, just really meditating on this experience and this place has been in my mind it seems to be related to unworthiness too and it's been in my mind it emerged quite a long time ago 15 20 years ago and there were periods when i didn't meditate because i just found it so uncomfortable um and it felt, it just felt like all, I'm looking at all rage, all anger, didn't, didn't feel anything specific. But, um, I felt okay about it. Um, and what came into my mind was I used to periodically visit a small monastic community in South Wales um, and we were doing a Kali ceremony and they had this black beautiful statue 
that you couldn't see any other time of the year. And it was the, one of the most profoundest and uncomfortable experiences I've ever had. And um, so uncomfortable. And that just came strongly into my mind. So that helped me to see it slightly different way, seeing this as not just something destructive, but something creative and to be reborn in some way. Um, but I think I've been very frightened of this in my mind. This, this rage, this unworthiness, somehow related. Yeah, it feels to do, my mind saying something to do with separation. And it, felt, it felt like a lot of self-attack, uh, initially anyway, a lot of anger itself. But it does tie in with all this fear I have around authority figures somehow so that feels like you know it could be god um, i'm not entirely aware of that having the fear here as well with our host in that respect but i have it with all you guys you know uh, in authority those are some of the things that just came into my mind during the meditation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What comes to my mind is just the line Jesus says, you have been afraid of everyone and everything, including yourself and me. <laughs> like you talk about anger and that's of course, that is what covers up the fear, it's the same fear or anger, but it's just because it's put outside of the mind, You're like even your own self is believed to be Peter, it's outside of who you really are, and that's why there is anger. Yeah. So it's good, okay. sounds like you're in okay. a good process. Good. Yeah. <coughs> in a what, sorry? Yeah, it sounds like you're in a good process, you know, to allow, to let it yeah. wash through and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's definitely been part, a disowned part of my mind. Mm. And uh, I've gone there periodically and I've been going there more recently. But in the past, the feelings that came up were just too kind of overwhelming and disgusting and I'd get quite suicidal even I just wanted to get away from my mind in the past. Yeah. It's funny how the ego also concludes things on the timeline, you know. You sometimes have memories of things way back and then they are reference points somehow to now. But I don't know, it's never never really write about the timeline, you know, all the conclusions are false. Right. Yeah. So that's, that can be a nice discovery. Mm. Thank you. It's helpful. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Um, well, thank you, Matthew. Um, I didn't pay attention, I didn't realize I'm going to speak about that till you were sharing. I think I am mothering my daughter. So I have a daughter, she was, I don't know how to say in English, but, but treated by the man she was living with. Mm. And, uh, Spontaneously, mm. I decided um, 
I'm going to give you a little bit of money mm. because I, um, I, well, because I want it. And I, I, I am in this, um, well, I, I was doing. So the other day I talked with Amanda, no? Because I think the same way yesterday we put, or as we share to the table, the fear that is inside me and the anger of being distracted. Also, I think there is a kind of, I'm going to say discipline, is a strict task of mother in a way, mm. of uh, helping more, mm. more than mother. Mm. And also I say to myself, well, I should continue working because I maintain it. Mm. Uh, since few months, she does not necessarily like to continue that. And she had uh, talks with me, Tell me, well, Menkes is okay. Uh, this night I have an insomnia. <laughs> and, well, I was eating a really lovely video about how to make in silence your own critic. I like this, you let the space to the pews. You let the space to what could happen, because if not, it's impossible. And later I went back to sleep, and I dreamt with her something I can say, because I have not the memory, but something uncomfortable. When I woke up later, I received an early message from her, and she has started the course of miracles. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and right now when you were talking, this is very deep in me, mm -hmm. and I am mothering, did you say that? Mm -hmm. uh, not only my sister, in this case, also other mm -hmm. relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a good insight. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a really, really beautiful coming to see. Yes, I should that I would like to... Do. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, you will have the Holy Spirit's help to undo that. Just the seeing it is yeah, the precious first step. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> because you're not a mother. She's not a daughter. Your sister is not a sister. Mm. None of it is. True. Mm -hmm. So then you can you put them on the altar and then you will ask the Holy Spirit how, what what you are, what they are, and what to do if anything. Just to be guided. Mm -hmm. yeah. You heard? Yeah. She's realized that she's been mothering her daughter and her sister. No, and my sister, I have not good. Yeah. <laughs> and she realizes it's not the way she wants to be anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Love you. you. Thank Bye. you. Love you. <laughs> Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.